Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Tuesday, March 17th, 2015. Here are our top stories. And tonight, you'll have some unexpected surprises. Here Vote for me, I'm a fascist witch, criminal, <laughs> not even a real liberal like Thomas Jefferson. I'm a total corporate fraud like McDonald's. I'm Hillary Clinton. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> Excuse me. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. <laughs> These things must be done delicately. Well, of course, Ebola was last year's news, correct? We should just move on. It's a finished story. Not exactly. We now have a health worker undergoing treatment today that has been moved from serious to critical condition in Maryland. And of course, they brought back last week 12 healthcare workers to the United States that were infected with Ebola. This Maryland patient is the 11th person with Ebola to be treated in the United States since last August. Of the first 10 people treated for Ebola in the U.S., eight survived and two have died. And again, he is now in critical condition. They just downgraded that from serious condition. Now, to put this in perspective, for just healthcare workers alone, as NBC pointed out about two and a half months ago, the count was nearly 500 healthcare workers dead from Ebola. The exact number is 838 sick and 494 dead as of January, the beginning of January. Now, to put that in perspective, that's about five times the number of people that had died total from previous uh, Ebola outbreaks, the largest outbreaks previously. That's about 20 times the previous largest outbreak of number of people that have come down with Ebola. So this is a massive outbreak, even amongst healthcare workers who are exercising the most extreme care, who are following all the procedures given to them by the CDC and others. Still, we have about five times the number of people that have died from this as the previous worst Ebola outbreak. But we also learned today that in Amarillo, it's not just people being brought back to the United States, but we still have people coming into the United States that are perhaps bringing Ebola with them. We see that two people have now been put under watch in Amarillo. We have two patients that came in, flew in from Liberia to Amarillo. They did not have any symptoms when they first came in, but now the mother and child have both developed fevers. And of course, as I mentioned before, the 12 workers who were just brought to the U.S. for treatment for Ebola are from Sierra Leone, where nobody is saying that it's under control. As a matter of fact, the vice president of Sierra Leone was put under quarantine about a week and a half ago. There's another connection to Sierra Leone, and that is the Tulane University experimentation on hemorrhagic fever was being conducted in Sierra Leone near where the outbreak began around the time that it began. The government there suspected that perhaps it had gotten out of their laboratory by mistake or even perhaps deliberately, and they told Tulane to shut down their research and move out. Now we see in the United States, again, this developing story at Tulane University in Louisiana, we see that a deadly bacteria, Burkholderia pseudomaliae, is now escaped from the lab there. They brought it to America. It's not indigenous to America. It's not endemic to America. They brought it here to study it. It's part of the CDC's Select Agents Program to weaponize deadly bacteria. This has a 50% casualty rate in Thailand where it's endemic. They brought it here to weaponize it. They brought it here to create a vaccine at the same time. And of course, Allison Young with USA Today has been following this very closely. She's been following all of the problems at the CDC labs experimenting on deadly bacteria. Just last week, teams went back to the area to see if they could figure out how it got out of the lab. They still don't know. And to the extent to which it has it spread into the environment. Local officials there are very concerned about this. And now we see that yet another person has come down with this. A worker not come down with any symptoms, but they show signs of having been exposed. In the end of last week, it was reported by USA Today that a worker at Tulane has possibly been exposed to the bioterror bacteria. They say new tests indicate that a worker at the Tulane National Primate Research Center near New Orleans has been exposed to the dangerous bioterror bacteria that was somehow released from a high security lab onto the property, a federal official said Wednesday night. Now, previously, there was a U.S. Department of Agriculture inspector who went there initially to investigate the uh, escape from the lab of that bacteria. She got sick the day after she visited there. But this is the interesting thing. They have maintained all along that she did not get sick because of that particular bacteria. They say, well, she's been in areas 
where she's been exposed to this bacteria all over the world. So that's probably what was behind it. What is interesting is that they never said that they tested for the particular strain, as they did with the seven monkeys who got sick. They named the particular strain that they were experimenting on. They said these monkeys tested positive for that, so they knew that it was that same bacteria strain, but they never said that she tested negative. They also said she didn't, didn't say that she tested positive. It's also interesting that just prior to that, as the inspectors went back a second time to see the extent of the way that it had spread into the soil, perhaps, into the environment. Uh, they're very concerned about that in Louisiana. As they went back, this is what the director of the center, Andrew Lackner, said. He said that testing and surveillance, pl surveillance plans are still being developed, but he says he questioned whether the bioterror bacterium possibly was already naturally present in Louisiana's soil and water, but just hadn't been recognized because nobody had looked for it systemically before. He said in his community update last week, he wrote, quote, the various Burkholderia species have been present in domestic animals in Louisiana since at least 2004, long before any scientific study of the organism began at the primate center. Now, as he's putting that out, I can get an image of some guy in a corrupt uh, company that's being interviewed by 60 Minutes, sweating and lying behind the desk. He knows very well that this has never been endemic into Louisiana. He knows that they brought it in here, and if it's found in the environment, it's because it escaped from their lab. Just a couple of days before, the reporter from USA Today, Allison Young, had talked to Jay Gee, a CDC expert on Burkholderia pseudomaliae, and told USA Today in an interview that the bacteria has never been found in nature on the continental United States. So there you go. They're trying to cover their tracks already. They try to pretend that the USA, USDA inspector uh, didn't come down with their particular strain, got it somewhere else, saying that this was something that was already here in the United States. It wasn't. It was brought here to the United States to be weaponized. It's called gain of function. They call these things select agents because they can be used as bioterror weapons. And they're developing a vaccine at the same time. But of course, we should not be concerned about vaccines. And of course, we should not have informed consent for things that the federal government has already removed liability from the pharmaceutical companies for. They no have no liability for vaccines. That was removed in 1986. InfoWars reports that the mandatory vaccine bill has now failed in two states. Those states are Oregon and Washington State. They failed last week. The Washington bill, which would have outlawed parents from citing personal or philosophical beliefs to exempt their children from vaccine requirements, failed in the state house on Thursday. A similar bill in Oregon, which would have also banned parents from using religion as an exemption, died Wednesday after its author, State Senator Elizabeth Steiner Hayward, said that she didn't have enough votes. Now, this of course is wording from Huffington Post. We need to not let them control the debate by controlling the terminology. It is not a personal belief exemption. It is informed consent. And that is sacrosanct if we're not going to have a medical tyranny, if we're not going to have people being experimented on for the greater public good as people were experimented on in Tuskegee or as they were experimented on in the Nazi camps. That was something that was stressed with the Nuremberg trials and put into the Nuremberg Code. Informed consent is absolutely sacrosanct. But of course, Elizabeth Steiner Hayward is someone who had used her informed consent in her own personal case. And in a moving testimony, a lawyer pointed that out to her, that she had questioned her doctor, questioned the pharmaceutical recommendations for medication that she was taking as she was breastfeeding. She did her own research. She, real, she believed that it was not going to harm her child, and she ignored the advice of her physician, ignored the advice of the pharmaceutical companies. All we are asking for is that we have the right to inform ourselves and to understand what the risks are and to make that final decision ourselves. But she said that she's disappointed that the conversations have largely revolved around who is right or wrong about science and the benefits versus risk of vaccines rather than about the health and well being of Oregon's children. Look, the conversation needs to revolve around who is right or wrong about science. And the conversation needs to revolve around what the risks are. That is the essence of the conversation. Not that you can maintain that there is some 
nebulous risk to public health. Therefore, we all need to just shut up and do what the government tells us. That's not going to happen. A very good uh, beginning, but there are still a lot of states. California is one. There's even bills here in Texas to try to put people on registers, to try to take away informed consent. The fight is far from over, but a couple of battles have been won. Stay with us right after the break. We're going to have more mainstream admissions about how the FBI is behind every single terrorist attack, either as a false flag or creating mentally disturbed patsy. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com. Oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market. Sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 well, as I've said many times before, the war on drugs is really a war of drugs, with our government supplying it as well as using law enforcement against it. The same thing is true of the war on terror, of course. It really is a war of terror, with our government running both sides. It's so obvious that mainstream media can no longer escape it. We have Dennis Kucinich, as well as Rand Paul, talking about how we were going to be al-Qaeda's air force in Syria. But of course, it goes far beyond that. al Qaeda was created as well as funded and trained by the U.S. government and continues to be so even today. Now, the New York Times is pointing out that the U.S. is giving al-Qaeda millions of dollars. They say the U.S. government says it has given al-Qaeda millions of dollars largely because of poor oversight and loose financial controls. There you go. That's a way to help them escape. See, that way they could admit what is eventually going to come out anyway and say, it wasn't malicious, it wasn't a conspiracy, it was simply incompetence. Look, the poor oversight and the loose controls are on the part of the American people who allow this gang called the CIA to run roughshod over everyone. And this is really CYA, cover your assets for the CIA. As Kurt Nemo points out, details of the money transfer supposedly showed up in the papers of Osama bin Laden, who was, according to the official story, killed in 2010. They say that he was concerned that all of this cash that he was getting was perhaps contaminated with poison or radioactive uh, contaminants. They were paying Osama bin Laden. He was their agent. And as he points out, this is from the special... General for Inspector General for Afghan Reconstruction said, I am deeply troubled that the U.S. military can pursue, attack, even kill terrorists and their supporters, but that some in the U.S. government believe we cannot prevent these same people from receiving a government contract. Look, Al Qaeda is a government contractor. It couldn't be more obvious. We've been saying this. Many people are saying it. You can't escape it. You can only try to spin it and say that it's incompetence. 
but it isn't. Going back to Curtin Mo's article, because he has an excellent article about this, analyzing what the New York Times is putting out there in a controlled release. He says, as Sam Muho states, it's not religious sectarianism or the Wahhabist drive to execute apostates under the banner of ISIS that's the problem. Rather, it is the hegemonic and imperialistic designs of the NATO governments who have on record worked with Saudi Arabia and Qatar to use Islamic extremists throughout the Middle East as their Swiss army knife of destabilization to reorient the Middle East into their interests. And of course, the same NATO forces did this with Gladio in Italy and elsewhere in Europe, using communism as the foil. Now we see the details of it coming out again, yet again. We've seen this exposed many times. And as we have pointed out, as Robert David Steele has pointed out, as Judge Napolo, uh, Napolitano has pointed out, Every one of these domestic terrorist incidents have either been false flags or they have been patsies who have been brought in by the FBI just so they could catch them at the last minute and scare people about the possibility of terrorism. Now we see how one of these was done. This is the sting, how the FBI created a terrorist. Now this is a man named Osma Kak, 25 years old. This is back in January 7th, 2012. He went into a day's end in Tampa, Florida, and filmed what the FBI would later call a martyrdom video. However, he was not a terrorist. He was somebody who was profoundly mentally disturbed. As they point out in the research, he was only a terrorist in his troubled mind and in the minds of ambitious federal agents. The government could not provide any evidence that he had connections to international terrorists. He didn't have his own weapons. He didn't even have enough money to replace the dead battery in his beat-up green 94 Honda Accord. The Intercept points out that he was a target of an elaborately orchestrated FBI sting that involved a paid informant as well as FBI agents. This went on for three months. The FBI provided all of the weapons. They gave him the supposed car bomb that he allegedly planned to detonate. They even paid for his taxi so that he could get to where the FBI needed him to go. And psychiatrists say that he was deeply disturbed. In other words, he only became a terrorist after the FBI held his hand every step of the way, probably running the cameras for him as well. But of course, we have to surrender our freedoms and due process to protect ourselves from these terrorists. Let me tell you who the real terrorists are. The real terrorists are our own government and people in the FBI who did what allegedly happened to this Portland man who is now suing the FBI. He says, this is a Guardian story, I was tortured in the United Arab Emirates for refusing to become an FBI informant. Now, he was part of a mosque. They have tried to set up other members of the mosque, at least nine of its members. He was uh, essentially set up by putting him on a no-fly list. Then they tried to turn him into an, an informant. When he refused, they rendered him to the United Arab Emirates where they kept him for 109 days and tortured him as they tried to pressure him into becoming an informant. He finally made it back to the US and he is now suing the FBI. Now the other part of our criminal government, the surveillance state is moving on full speed ahead. We said this was going to happen as Richard Burr, the Republican became head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. He never saw any surveillance that he didn't like. As a matter of fact, he doesn't want you to see any surveillance that the government does. He says nothing that the uh, NSA does should ever be made available to the public, nothing at all. So we're not going to see too many revelations coming out of this Senate Intelligence Committee. What we did see come out of it is CISPA for the third time. It passed the Senate Intelligence Committee 14 to 1. The only person not voting for it was Ron Wyden. The person, if you remember, who put James Clapper on the spot and had him commit perjury rather than admitting to dragnet surveillance, which subsequently came out in the Snowden leaks anyway. Now, what they're proposing this time is not exactly CISPA. It's now called CISA. They've taken the P out. The P was there for protectionists, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. They've taken the protection out. You know what the protection was there for. It was not your protection. It was protection for the companies that are illegally spying on you, stealing your privacy, turning the data over to the federal government. It was to protect them from civil and criminal liability for working with the government and its illegal spy operations. So this is now coming back for the third time. If you remember, Aaron Schwartz led the, uh, the uh, uh, movement to defeat this 
the first time it came out, and it has been defeated a second time. They brought it back right after he died. Now they're going to try to ram it through. They may very well get it through with the Republicans' help. But this is what Ron, Ron Wyden had to say, the only one who voted against this. He said, if information sharing does not include adequate privacy protection, then it is not a cybersecurity bill. It's just a surveillance bill by another name. Exactly right. It's too bad we don't have more senators who are looking out for our privacy. And I don't agree with Ron Wyden on many things, but we have to join with people who are fighting to stop this surveillance state. And on this issue, he is a man of, of integrity as well as bravery for standing alone against the surveillance state. I don't think we're going to stop it, however, in Washington. We're going to stop it at the state level if we're going to stop it at all. We have a bill that's been introduced in Texas by Jonathan Strickland, a Texas uh, representative, to cut off the utilities to the NSA facilities in Texas because they are violating our privacy. They're violating our Fourth Amendment. This is something that has been tried and proposed in other states. This is something that has uh, essentially come out of the Tenth Amendment Center. They've had several state legislators have advanced this in different states. Uh, the key one, of course, would be Utah, where the giant facility there is using a massive amount of electricity and water that could power several cities out there. In this particular bill, Representative Jonathan Strickland has introduced HB 3916 in Texas that will cut off water and electricity, uh, electricity service to all NSA data collection centers in Texas. Now, last session, he led the fight in passing one of the strongest privacy protections in the nation at the state level with an email privacy bill that required a warrant for state police to access electronic data. So uh, thank you very much, Representative Strickland. He says he was elected to fight for liberties and privacy of all Texans, and that's exactly what he's doing. We need more representatives like him. And if you live in Texas or these other states, you need to contact your representatives and put some heat under them. Now, the question always comes up when we see the government act in criminal ways, how can they get away with that? You know, when we see an article like this next one, we see a man pull up that article who dressed as a TSA agent and sexually assaulted a woman. How do we tell someone who does that from someone who dresses up as a TSA agent, has a government check, and sexually assaults people? What's the difference? Is it because they get the government check? Is that what makes it legitimate? Is that what makes it moral? The story that we had last week, of course, about tax thieves targeting 366,000 Americans, getting $15 million from them, telling them that they were the IRS, using the same kind of con game that the IRS uses, intimidating them. How do we tell the difference between people who are pretending to be IRS agents and IRS agents who actually get a check from the government who are using phony laws and con man practices. Look, we ought to go back, especially Christians need to understand the real meaning of Romans 13, and that is when the government acts as a criminal, it is a criminal. We need to stop giving people passes because they get a government paycheck or have an official uniform. Well, stay with us right after the break. We have a special report from John Bowne on the engineered race war, as well as Rob Dew with a hilarious interview with the creator of a Hillary Clinton doll. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1 888 253 3139. 
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. To get to the heart of this country, one must examine its racial soul. Though this nation has proudly thought of itself as a ethnic melting pot, in things racial, we have always been, and we, I believe, continue to be, in too many ways, essentially a nation of cowards. Outgoing Attorney General Eric Holder's transparent statement echoes the intent of European billionaire George Soros' attempt to divide and conquer America's diverse populace with his open society organization. Soros reportedly gave at least $33 million in one year to a range of activist groups within the United States. And he has been funding his open society movement since the early 90s. One of these organizations, Black Lives Matter, rather than moving in the obvious direction of unifying society, has instead marched into the lives of all Americans with their divide and conquer whining. I gotta go to Ross right now, honey. If I don't get there, honey, I'm gonna get fired. I got six kids to feed. Day goes on, honey. He's out every day. Deal with it the right way. Not like this. This was the scene this morning. Thousands of irate commuters at a standstill. Some getting out of their cars and taking matters into their own hands. The Black Lives Matter movement, made up of mostly millennials, those born from 1980 to 2000, a generation removed from the unifying progress Americans had made since the civil rights movement, a generation raised on gangster rap and video games, is going to school the older generation that lived through it on race relations? Stripped of possessions, stripped of innocence, and then stripped of life. Joshua Babish describes the brutal deaths of his brother Jordan Babish and his friend Jacob Kudla. The teens from Westland went missing in July of 2012, their lifeless bodies discovered days later in a field on Detroit's east side. Yet when Young had his chance to apologize to the families, he did nothing of the sort. I'd like to say sorry to the families of Ayanna Jones, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, and I want to apologize to them for not being able to get justice for their loved ones who was murdered in cold blood. And in respect for the peaceful protest, I want to say hands up, don't shoot, Black Lives Matter. Lana Mercer of LewRockwell.com reports that now a Princeton-based educational test has found that not only do Generation Y, aka Millennials, trail their overseas peers by every measure, but they even score lower than other age groups of Americans. Millennials in the U.S. lag in literacy, including the ability to follow simple instructions, practical math, and hold on to your hat, a category called problem-solving in technology-rich environments. Worse yet, even the best-educated millennials stateside couldn't compete with their counterparts in Japan, Finland, South Korea, Belgium, Sweden, or elsewhere. Altogether, the top U.S. generation wires, millennials, in the 90th percentile scored lower than their counterparts in 15 countries. Black Lives Matter was completely clueless when Planned Parenthood ironically joined their movement. Planned Parenthood, funded by billionaire eugenicist Bill Gates, George Soros, and the Rockefeller Foundation, championed by Margaret Sanger, a woman responsible for the death of countless black lives. In 1939, Planned Parenthood pioneer and leftist Margaret Sanger began the Negro Project. To bring people along willingly, she enlisted black preachers to support sterilization. She outlined the deceitful plan in a letter to Clarence Gamble of the Procter & Gamble Empire. 
We should hire three or four colored ministers, preferably with social service backgrounds and with engaging personalities. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. Now, billion-dollar Starbucks has thrown their money at race relations, while leftist media figures rush to defend Black Lives Matter protester and Ferguson cop shooter Jeffrey Williams. Meanwhile, home prices and the overall economy of Ferguson, Missouri plummet. The first thing the Black Lives Matter millennials need to do is pull their heads out of their collectivist rear ends and realize they are being funded and played by the very people they are protesting against. Well, there's always the next generation. But actually, I'm not even Chinese. I'm Filipino. When they tease me, sometimes it bothers me. Usually when they do this, I just laugh at it. I never call them names or try to fight them. I practice nonviolent solutions to solve my problems, just like Dr. King. Because I have a dream. That my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. John Bound for Infowars.com. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Introducing the first proprietary oxygen-based intestinal cleanser, OxyPowder, backed by FDA-approved phase one, two, and three clinical trials. All the toxins from the air, the food, the water, ultimately ends up in the gut or affects the gut. Take your health into your own hands and start cleansing your body today with OxyPowder. Secure your OxyPowder today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. A few months ago, I did a video on the Hillary Clinton talking nutcracker, and uh, I got contacted by a group called uh, FCTRY, which stands for Factory, and they're, they're making a uh, Hillary Clinton action figure. They actually want to go through with this. They're hoping she gets the 2016. They got the 2016 there on the side, and uh, I'm going to have the maker of this right now, Jason Feinberg, the founder uh, and CEO of FCTRY. I'm going to have him on and try to convince him not to make the Hillary doll and that we should not go down this path and that we should celebrate people who are really good and really outstanding. And we know nobody's perfect, but Hillary Clinton is a master criminal and we need to expose that. I'm joined now by the CEO and founder of Factory FCTRY, Jason Feinberg. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, thanks. Great. I, hey, I appreciate you sending me one of the prototypes of the Hillary doll. Uh, I've gone into a little bit of it told people about your Kickstarter site. You guys are really close to your goal. Now, I want to give you the floor here at the beginning. Why is it important that we have a Hillary Clinton uh, action figure? All right, there, there are a bunch of reasons why I think it's important. Um, and I should say, we're, we're the same company that back in 2008 made the Obama action figure. So we do have a bit of history with this sort of thing. If I'm being totally serious, um, it, it was a good sort of grassroots pop culture way for us to get involved in a really fun, lighthearted way in the elections last time. Um, now, Hillary's a different character than Obama, so this time around, 
there's there's this other aspect of it where she's a female icon and this uh, this doll is obviously going to be compared to something like a Barbie doll where back in the day with Obama it was more of a Star Wars comparison um so as as now a maker of what could be an iconic girls toy I'm pretty psyched to have something out there on the market that represents girls in a different way than say a Barbie does well I agree with you there Barbie is definitely not any way in relationship to how a normal female should look or maybe even behave, but that's something that, that, that's definitely been around for a while. So I, I do commend you there. You guys are uh, about, what, a little less than 1,500 away from your goal at this point. Now, I want to convince you not to make this doll right now. Oh. And the, her first, her, back in 2011, we ran a humanitarian mission to Libya. I want to bring up this article, Libya Before and After Minute shows what a NATO UN humanitarian mission looks like. And uh, so here's, here's the article. Now scroll up, guys. Let's, so there's 2011. That's, that's what we did after. There's what Libya was like before. So we were getting rid of a dictator to give them ruined rubble and bomb-strewn areas. And this was something Hillary Clinton was very proud of. After the, uh, the death of Gaddafi was announced, she was being interviewed, and she goes, he, we came, he saw, uh, we came, we saw, and he died or I think her exact words during an interview, maybe with Greta Van Susteren, some news yeah. head. But I mean, what do you think of that? I mean, is this part of Hillary's legacy? Is this something little girls should look up to, to leading humanitarian missions that look, end up like this? Well, look, realistically, if, if you're going to talk about any political leader being a role model, um, look, we also made a toy of Gandhi a few years ago. Um, and, and you can point to things that Gandhi did that aren't... Um, perfectly savory either. As long as you're going to turn a actual real world leader into a heroified figure in any way, I think, yeah, there's always going to be the other side that you can point to. You know, interesting fact about Gandhi, he was anti, he was an anti-vaxxer. He was one of the first anti-vaxxers, which I kind of look up to him about. He wrote a book on about why vaccination is, is uh, bad and how you should take care of smallpox. Back then it was smallpox, what they're giving people vaccinations for. And he said, you can't cure filth with filth. And, uh, you know, in, in your video, you said we don't need another bush, which I totally agree with. I'm 110% on board with you there. We don't need another bush. I don't think we need another Clinton. I don't think we need any of these dynasties. I mean, what does this say in our world where it looks like we are going to have a Bush Hillary election? I mean, is this really a, a Bush Clinton election? Is this really a choice that we're getting? I mean, are we being force fed this stuff? Well, look, uh, my, my background is, is in the arts, right? I, I'm a sculptor, and on this project, we collaborated with a pretty well-known sculptor um, who, who's known for his own sort of social and political commentary. And part of, why, part of what we're doing here is, is we're making a commentary on the greater American culture, right? Um, and the fact that, that Clinton and Bush have become brands to the point where you can have these sort of branded products in their name is to me fascinating, just as, as a student of contemporary American culture. I think it's cool. Okay. Yeah, and I'm actually showing the, the figure on screen now. This is a prototype you guys sent me. And um, how many are you expected to make if you go into mass production? Um, I mean, partly that depends on how this Kickstarter campaign goes and then obviously what happens in the campaign. You know, we're, we're expecting to be selling these up through 2016. Um, I can tell you that with Obama, we made 200,000 of them. That's pretty good. And I do want to commend you for, uh, I guess, seeing the opportunity and making the, you know, free market business decision to go, hey, you know, I'm going to capitalize on this. Obama seems like he's this cult type leader in terms of, you know, cult of personality. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to capitalize on this and, and make this doll, make a name for myself. You've done other products, um, what like the mustache fire, the gummy goods, little giants, stuff you see at like, you know, kind of Spencer's Gifts type stores where it's kind of kitschy, cool little stuff. It's, that's original. I think it's pretty original stuff. I don't necessarily agree that we should be celebrating Hillary Clinton because I think we've had enough of the Clintons and the Bushes in our lives. Uh, one, uh, I guess I got a couple more final questions, but one about... Uh, Benghazi. What, what are your thoughts about Benghazi and what happened there? I mean, look, I'm, I'm a sculptor and a toy maker. Do you really want my opinions on Benghazi? What? Why not? We're all, I mean, we're all here. We're all living in this world together. I mean, yeah, you, you probably have an opinion on why you're sculpting. You're probably listening to things. I mean, the Democrats are running from Hillary right now. They're kind of distancing themselves. 
So, and, and I'm not trying to poo poo your project. I think, you know, I think you're a self starting guy and I think you're a great guy. But, you know, <laughs> what if we did like a Hillary with maybe a skull face on her? You know, one that really shows what she represents here in America. No, you see, like the, the beauty is that I can leave the market open for somebody to come along with that idea. <laughs> that's actually, actually, that's Alex Jones. He was so interested in the uh, interview today. He popped on. <laughs> And uh, he was he was directing. Actually, we're going to put him on real quick. Let, I'm going right. to let Jones ask you a question. This was definitely this not, not planned. planned. I got to tell you, man, the, the issue is we don't need another George Bush doll, another Hillary doll. We need to have stuff about true Americana, you know, things that actually made this country great. Have you made a George Washington doll or a, or a George Washington Carver doll? We keep worshiping these establishment uh, facsimiles are nothing but mob bosses. It's like North Korea. They've had three generations of the Kim Jong Uns and Kim Jong Il and his dad. We don't need any more Bushes or any more uh, Clintons. We need them to politically rest in peace. And that's why I came in here because Kickstarter campaigns are great and everything. And I would support a Kickstarter campaign uh, for twin bobbleheads of the Bushes, say Jeb Bush and Hillary, saying rest in peace politically, no more, hell no Hillary, hell no Jeb Bush, we are sick of it. Or, and or that's what I'm trying <laughs> to say. We need a bobblehead that actually wants to live in a free country I, I and think not we need celebrate a some lying CIA scumbag witch. We, that's all I have to say. Do you can go back to your softball interview. Uh, we need a two-headed bobblehead, uh, one with uh, a dragon with Bush on one side and Hillary on the other and go, look, this is the same thing to teach people about the left-right paradigm. Do you, are you aware of the left-right paradigm, Jason? No. All right, the left-right paradigm is, this is what they have us in. This is two wrestling. So WWF, you get the good guys and bad guys, but they're all getting paid by Vince McMahon. It doesn't matter who wins or who loses. Vince McMahon wins every time. Behind the Democrats and behind the Republicans I are the same Hillary. people. Oh, for the liberal, oh, <laughs> They're oh, the same people. And that's what I'm trying to, to educate tyranny, you on. Hillary, like, Hillary, 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 Vince Foster, Vince Foster, <laughs> Cattlegate. There's all kind of stuff. I mean, they're, they're the legions of, of the Bush and the Clinton crime families. I mean, it's legion what they've done. But, like, make one, let's educate people on the left-right paradigm. I bet you'd sell that out even Bar quicker Trump, with a Kickstarter uh, coffee, campaign. Pronto. I actually, I, I like that idea. Look, I... I didn't say that I am personally on one side or the other. I'm I'm a social commentarist. Right. Um, I, I'm kind of behind your left right paradigm. What other TV network has a boss that actually comes in and hijacks interviews. Yeah. <laughs> Not many. Usually they do it through fax or something. But yeah, I mean, I think you know because you, you got 21 days. Maybe you'll make it. Maybe you won't. But I think you should definitely look at the left right paradigm doll, which. When you push one belly, it says one thing, like, vote for me, I'm liberal. Boom, vote for me, I'm conservative. Liberals are going to give you something. Conservatives are going to give you something. But it's, it's still, they're still owned by the same bankers, the bank, banking monopoly. Here vote he comes. for me, I'm a fascist witch, criminal, <laughs> not even a real liberal like Thomas Jefferson. Excuse me. <laughs> In fact, how about that? A big, just call it the Hillary Clinton doll, but it's really, what's that turd from South Park? Oh, yeah, Mr. Poop, Mr. Hanky. Or call Mr. her Lemmy Winks. <laughs> Uh, you've just been bombed by Alex Jones. He's, he's come in and, uh, and ruined your chance to, to gain this Hillary Clinton action figure, make it into being. But we really, we, you know, I want to invite you on to give you um, the chance. I want to give you a final say to, you could throw this out there to your Kickstarter people, but I want you to cons seriously consider making the left-right paradigm doll. Go ahead. You got two minutes. All right. Well, first of all, I think we need you guys to send back that figure because I'm worried about her. <laughs> no, she'll be fine. I'll take care of her. sending her to a loving home. Oh. <laughs> I'll take good care of her. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you, get, you gave me the idea. I think you might eat her on. I think you might eat her on air. Uh oh, this is it. This is it. <laughs> actually, she's not even worth right, actually being a martyr for the tyranny. Good. We're just going to send her to the icebox as cold as hell as so cold she can live there with her cold heart. No, she's Every already step. politically been Every defeated and destroyed now. So there's nothing we even need to do to Hillary Clinton. But it is kind of fun to do this, so let's see what happens right now. <laughs> Give me a wide shot right here. <laughs> there we go. He said he's willing to go side by side with the Alex Jones and the Hillary Clinton action figure to see what America right. wants. I, I think I think when you see the Alex Jones PR machine get behind it, it will it will uh, it will quickly quickly sell out. Especially right. if it's uh, right now you have 412 backers, 21 days to go. 
The I guess you could check the Kickstarter project out if you'd like at um, Projects Factory, Projects forward slash FCTRY forward slash Hillary dash Clinton dash action figure. And this is all, none of this was scripted. This was all teleprompter free. I just want you to know that. Unlike the MSNBC where you'll probably get some canned weird, you know, interview back and forth. But okay, go with your last, you get the final word. I'll give you the final say on this one. Final say, I want to get in the actual URL you should be giving people. It's HillaryActionFigure.com. And we've been putting that up on, on the screen, and we actually played a couple of clips from your video, especially, you know, I agree with the part. We don't need another Bush. I don't think we need another Hillary. Uh, I could see your reasons for maybe wanting this action figure, but, you know, I definitely think you should do the two-headed monster, left-right paradigm action figure, because that's what right we really are dealing with out here. And that's, that's what's really going to educate people. Until people come to grips with... Democrats aren't going to save us and Republicans aren't going to save us. We're going to be stuck in this same poop sandwich that we've been living in. Our economy really isn't getting any better. That's a good doll. You know? The Hillary poop sandwich. <laughs> there he goes. Well, you're really <laughs> starting to go straight. Huh? <laughs> St. Patty's Look, Day, baby. As far as your two-headed idea goes, can I just make a suggestion as a toy designer? Go for it. What you want is one head with two faces, front and back, so you can just turn it around. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, and then it says different things when you switch it around. Have you seen the Hillary Clinton Nutcracker? That's why they called me. They saw this interview on the, and it actually, mine actually talks when, when you stroke it the right way. She's a little. I'm going to take your guns, <laughs> but I'm going to have bodyguards. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, thanks for coming on, being a good sport. Uh, good luck with your project, and if it does get funded, and I would love to see an Alex Jones action figure, and if you do the two-headed monster paradigm, we'll have you back on and let you promote that, too. Good luck Yo. to you. Take care. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks to Dave and Knight for doing the news. I'm Rob Dew, and this has been InfoWars Nightly News. There's your Hillary Clinton doll. For, uh, hey, if you like reports like these and you want to su really support us, become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It supports everything we do here, sending the reporters out, having Ronald... Donald McRonald out. In the, sorry, we're, we're having tossed the Hillary at this point. It's, it's devolved into that. But thanks for uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Please become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. See you later, Hillary. That's our show. Bye. <coughs> oh, we lost a shoe. I'll catch him this time. Here. Ready? From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.